Till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry, cause it's time for the daily bread. We just got out of this. Uh, meeting that we do every Friday uh, morning and then I've got a podcast that I'm gonna be on at 1:30 called uphill conversations which I'm really excited about that I'll be giving a, um, a little speech tomorrow on leading by example um, don't talk about it be about it it's kind of the, the topic there so uh, we'll get some footage of that other than that man I, I got to get this podcast or um, vlog episode out from the stuff that went on yesterday create some more content today and uh, there's not a lot of um, <laughs> not a lot of wiggle room today in the schedule. I love keeping my schedule like back to back to back to back to back because it eliminates the ability to have distractions, which is for me super important. So uh, that's it. I see you in business, people, they don't even get it. They talk about wisdom, they don't want to listen. Megan, you'll notice you'll have a lot of pointed questions. Like, so we both kind of looked into different things. She'll be very pointed. I'm more of the, I'm just one of those guys, like, I, I, I like to listen to answers. Okay. And then I dig into it. I like going deep. Yeah. I hate not being like I, I can't. I I'm not. I'm a non-surface person. I call it puddle love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I That's how people do life. They do puddle love. Yep. They do puddle love relationships where you can like literally. You know they think you can drown in this much water. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you do, that's really bad because you should be able to ingest most of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So how do you drown in that? Which means you never. You know, you never really could take in much anyway. You know what I mean? So I'm just I'm like a I like to go deep. Yeah. Both of you are, you could be ball players or wrestlers, man. So which and, one? And, and I didn't even think about this just now, but I haven't worn this shirt in like two years, and I put it on today, and then he shows up at the office. I'm like, you've got to be kidding! Like, this is like our team uniform. Yeah. No, but but no, man, it's it's great because it's not great. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. So welcome to another episode of UCYP. We're here with Tyler and TJ's floating around here. Uh, but hey, Tyler. Uh, talk to us about a little bit about you and how you're showing up in the world. My whole thing is I'm just an ordinary guy that's trying to do extraordinary things just by doing the extra. And it's just work, like, at the end of the day. I love that. Can I, I just got to say this. I, I love this. I literally had a coaching appointment this morning with one of our clients. Megan and I, have, we do a lot of coaching and team development for companies. And I literally said, wouldn't it be really cool if you could ask people, what's the extra on the ordinary? And, and, and because it's like most people will say, well, ordinarily, right? Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, this is what we do. But what if you said extraordinarily, this is what we do? And it's kind of like if I handed you flour, right? And Megan had some flour and I said, hey, here's the recipe to make this cake. So mm -hmm. here's all the ingredients. So you do it. What would you have? You would have something left over. Mm -hmm. The question is, what do you do with that? Exactly. Because that's where things move. Most people only bake the cake and they throw away the very best parts to explore new options mm -hmm. even if it's a small teeny tiny little cookie and i love what you said extraordinary extraordinarily <laughs> i have to throw that out there to you well, i mean i literally had this conversation i mean like i'm, I'm not kidding yeah and, and I'm, these things have like i've been very aware of lately of just how the universe conspires in weird ways uh, but i talk about extraordinary that word all the time because when you break it down it's just ordinary and that's just simple. It's right. the regular. It's the things that anybody can do. But it, the magic in that word is the extra part, which just means you're doing more of the regular, ordinary stuff than everybody else or that you've ever done before or than your competition or whatever. So that's like the ultimate encouragement to me because anyone that's listening to this, like 
we're not saying like, hey, go out and do something incredible that no one else in the world can do but you. Like, no, just go do the ordinary things that you know you're supposed to do, but just do more of it Tack than it on. Some everybody extra. else. Yeah. yeah, and that's super encouraging to me because there's nothing special <laughs> about me. I just do a lot of stuff. So how do you help people with that idea of don't let your – the things that happen to you, don't let them define you, number one. But number two, knowing that you can make those decisions and you can move forward with possibility. That's the thing. Possibility doesn't leave you because you do something different. How do you help people with that and not be embarrassed to say what you just said? The way I would answer that question is by saying that everybody's got their stuff. Like, I don't care who it is. If every successful person has a painful story, will your, will your painful story have a successful ending? Hmm. And the reality is those that you haven't heard yet, it's not that they don't have, it's just they've they're still hiding mm -hmm. they just haven't put it out there yet and and so that to me is so encouraging that we've all got our stuff and I'm trying to figure out how in the world I can help people experience these terrible things quicker and sooner and faster like that's it sounds weird but like I'm glad I experienced that in my 20s and not in my 50s like I'm glad yeah. it didn't take me that long to experience it because who knows what I would have done over the next 30 years in between terrible terrible I stuff. feel like with the level of entitlement that people have, I mean, it is so difficult for people to take ownership of mm -hmm. their own lives. Yeah. So how do you relay that to someone? I mean, how do you teach the younger generation or even those people who maybe are in their 40s or 50s, like there's still time. You still have 20, 30, maybe even 40 more years on this earth. Mm -hmm. There's still time to change your life isn't over yet. So how do you encourage people to do that. I, I love this real recognize real like people want to connect with real people and I think the only way to do that is by being vulnerable and by being transparent and I think if people realize how much strength there is in sharing the good bad and the ugly that they would realize like that's the only way you can build strong relationships and at the end of the day like relationships are all that matter. So I think it's just being able to be vulnerable, like telling someone that like, hey, like I know you are Superman, like I know you want to take on the world and you think you're invincible, but do you realize that by sharing your insecurities and by sharing what pain you've been through, that it will make you more invincible on the other end? And I, I dealt with this, it's almost seems so silly even as I'm thinking of it right now, but this like my struggles weren't big enough type complex. Like when you hear these stories that people that people that do tell them are usually really crazy stories. Like, and so I, I kind of even looked at my story and I was like, well, it's not that bad. And like, is it really going to even help? But it does. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, and, and I, people have this like, who am I? Like, who am I to talk and try to inspire someone? Who am I to try to, you know, get somebody to their next level? It's weird that our comparisons, like, you know, they say keeping up with the Joneses, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times that's what we're trying to do. Like a lot of the things that we're doing, we're trying to impress other people. We're trying to give people some sort of illustration that everything we have going on for us is great. And inside we can be in turmoil. Hmm. And we're not happy with it. Then you feel like you maybe you're on your own because you're the only one doing it. You're the only one investing in trying to change it. Or you may have some sort of partial cooperation. <laughs> but it's not advancing anything. It's still two oxen that are yoked together, and one is still dragging the other. And eventually, one's gonna, the other one's going to collapse. I'm always let them know, you're there because of this thing that you love them. And the story you want to tell them is that that's why you're here. Not what you've been through, not what you survived, which you said a minute ago, like, you know, you think, well, because of this, all this story, you get this type of outcome. Mm -hmm. I would see more response from me just saying that of them wanting to connect and talk and improve their lives than if I told them all the things that were wrong in my life because they're trying to do a comparison and they really can't. In your mind, how do you see that to, 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 do, to take the step? Because there are people that are listening there going, I need something drastic to change. You're, we're not saying you're the, this expert we're asking for your experience, where you are, and how you're showing up with it, and how you help others with it. How do you help them with that? I need something. I need to make a change. I think the easiest thing that you can do 
as step one is just change what you're allowing to come into your life. I think like with your circle of friends. If you can just take the most negative person in that group, eliminate them and, and put one positive person in place of them, the difference that will make over a short period of time is insane. But to take that a step further, if you can try to just eliminate all the negative things that are around you, and I know that's, that's impossible, especially if someone's in a bad, really bad situation, but they can start bringing more positive stuff in, whether it's reading books, whether it's listening to podcasts like this, whether it's watching YouTube videos. Like if you've got access to the internet, you've got access to All right, so <clears throat> just open up this package, super cool. Um, a guy named Kevin uh, Slocum, he's been um, engaging with our stuff for a long time. Just sent Joseph and I on the Sales Wolves podcast some uh, <laughs> some beard shirts, which is uh, pretty cool. And some beard product, which actually smells really good. This guy's got a beard oil company uh, that he started, one of his side hustles. Um, it's called Beard Joy beard oil then he also said he grinded up some of his favorite coffee um, there so I'll link it up um, but it's uh, beard.joy which is pretty awesome so appreciate that Kevin um, huh, it says his title is chief executive beard 